I think, uh, again, just a, a few comments, and really to underline, it's not an either or, um, and that really needs to be underlined. And I think we, we constantly move into this discu discussion thinking of changing the system, that it's all the future is about local capacity, but it's not. And But I think it's fundamentally about balance, and I, uh, this is where the report starts to sort of strike home about where do we invest and where should greater investment be made. Um, for an organiser, for, for a sector that's um, fundamentally about dealing with rapid change, we're, we're appalling at <laughs> making changes within ourselves. <laughs> and I think this is <laughs> fundamentally is something, it's probably the thing that should be challenged more and why bringing in the private sector is probably high time in many cases. I come, <coughs> like Nan, from a Red Cross background and, and one of the reasons I came into this sector or came to work with a partnership agency because I saw some of the Red Cross's best work of working through civil society and it's hence why I came directly to work with a partnership agency to look at um, what change could be brought about and to bring about long-term change so it's where again greater investment should be made but I think if I look back over the last 10 years it just hasn't it hasn't had that level of investment if you look at the figures um, and a piece of work that CAFL's just worked at funding at the sharp end the, the, the figures that's been placed at actually at civ with civil society partnership organisations has been so small, it's appalling. Um, and it's how that system can be changed. If you look at areas of weakness w within the report, um, as Ben has highlighted, around coverage and efficiency, uh, the, the greater criticism should be at the international system where they haven't built capacity, not at partnership agencies where so little investment has been made. And I think that can easily be changed. If you take examples of where CAFOD's invested uh, systematically, for example, with Caritas uh, Congo, Caritas Congo are now heralded as one of the leading players within Caritas, often quoted by in the past by Jan Egland, Ross Mountain, as why isn't this agent be agency being supported more when they have capacity at any one time to respond across multiple emergencies? And not to rule out the need also for the international system to work um, by, uh, hand in hand and together. So it's about complementarity. Um, it's not about either or, it's about balance. Um, so going back to Ben's report, it's about that th issue of change, I think, for me. It's about how do you challenge the status quo, not to undermine where you need that balance and different, uh, different capacities responding, but where how do you move funding into building long-term um, future capacity? Um, and it can't just be the question, oh, the risks are too great. We can, all of us are along this table and in this room, again and again, give examples of where in Syria today, where large amounts of aid are being channeled through civil society organisations. How are they receiving funds? Often through consortia type proposals. And again, I think it's, it's great that DFID's increasingly looking at um, consortium type proposals, but that also has to be the future. Um, the, the funding that um, DFID is also putting up through START and, and, f and moving, it's, it is about resilience as well, but it's also this big shift towards recognising it's about capacity building, about working, about putting sufficient energy, sufficient capacity into civil society organisations and partnerships so they can build long-term capacity. So my question really for the group is, how do we bring about this change and that we're not just revisiting a similar report a year down the line? Um, how do we make sufficient investment um, into partnership organisations to really bring about that change? 